Imperial was founded by Bill Lynch, has businesses in logistics, car rental, tourism, financial services, vehicle distribution and retail. Imperial operates in South Africa, Africa, Europe and Australia. The company has a market cap of 39.3 billion rand, a dividend yield of 3% and a price to earnings ratio of 14. Let's get straight into it. Paul, your thoughts on this one? Yeah, so it was a group that was really built by Bill Lynch, who was one of sort of South Africa's most successful entrepreneurs in a period from like the late 70s right through until he died unexpectedly and tragically at a fairly young age about four or five years ago. During that period, the group was kind of held together by the glue of his personality and it started out with motor retail and then expanded into all these logistics and transport related businesses. When he died, it coincided with the global economic crisis of 0809. So then there was a real careful look at the portfolio. And the new CEO, Hubert Brody, who's a younger guy, more an accountant, more of a kind of a seat of the pants kind of a guy, less the uh, extravagant entrepreneur, got rid of quite a number of the business. So extra, the uh, vehicle, heavy equipment, earth moving thing went. Mm -hmm. They got rid of the aerospace and all of those things related to the aircraft industry. Uh, so generally tidied up the balance sheet and they've also done a number of acquisitions. So I quite like it. It's well positioned and it has the, the suite of operations that Daniel is referring to. Vehicle sales, vehicle leasing, you know, all sorts of different forms of logistics, not just here in South Africa, also in Europe. So this company quite exposed to the consumer with your vehicle sales. Like Paul, he listed a number of operations that they've got at the moment. We know where the consumer is going, still under pressure. Yes, yes, yes sure still under pressure, but still able to borrow. Mm -hmm. And now with rates having gone down at the latest uh, meeting of the uh, Reserve Bank, I think we can expect not to see any hikes for quite a while. Um, so I think that's gonna keep car sales going. I think that also a couple of uh, more subtle factors are gonna support uh, this space. One being that guys have, um, guys have reduced their uh, churn rate. So when the crisis hit, guys suddenly started, uh, pre the crisis, you kept your car for three years and then you sold it, you got a new one. Then the crisis hit, everyone got very scared, you kept your car for five to six mm -hmm. years. Now what we're seeing out of the dealerships is that this is now coming back. Guys are now starting to keep their cars for less and less time. This is increasing the churn. So there, there are some supporting factors to that side of the business. But just touching on the more pure uh, logistics side, mm -hmm. they've got quite a significant exposure to Europe and specifically to Germany where they operate. But that's not to be confused with where they're actually exposed to in terms of end products. A lot of their products are actually exported out of that space. So they feed into these industries which produce and export. And now with the issues in the Eurozone, which everyone is very well aware of, mm -hmm. and the Euro weakening on the back of that, exports have actually become more attractive. Um, so they've got quite a diverse portfolio going for them and it's quite an interesting space to watch. So looking at the valuations, Paul, with a mm. PE of around uh, 13, there was also yeah. talk of a re-rating. Do you see that coming through? Well, it's been an interesting five years for them because I remember we looked at it quite seriously as a core holding for our clients before the fall. Mm -hmm. And my clients talked, my, not my clients, my colleagues talked me out of it, thank goodness, because it really got a thorough beating yeah. down there to uh, that low, I think of about sort of 40 odd rand. And since then rebounding now all the way up to 188. I don't know though, you know, the trouble is they don't have the financial thing anymore, so they got shot of Imperial Bank, mostly off went to Ned Bank. But I do like them. I think Hubert Brody is quite ambitious. I think there's a sense that there's another big transaction, one more to do in the South African logistics environment. Mm. I know that Bidvest has a big division there and a lot of people think that maybe the Bidvest group could be unbundled in years to come. So I just do think it's interesting and I like the kind of general uh, diversified nature of their business but corresponding also to the you know niche focus so they haven't got uh, too much outside of the space I'm not a big fan of the motor motor retail mm -hmm. type of thing but I do like all the other stuff that they're involved with so, so well diversified company hot or not Daniel in this one so just uh, for a quick summary mm -hmm. uh, I mean they've had a very str a very strong run-up mm -hmm. uh, that's probably more on the back of the AMH sales than anything else that's Kia Hyundai I mean if you try to get a Sportage test drive they don't even have a car in the country for the next six months uh, like I said, the logistics operations, it's, yeah. a, it's a good, it's a good uh, space to watch, um, especially with what's going to happen in Europe. And I think Paul uh, hit the nail on the head when he said that there's another big acquisition coming. Uh, I think a lot of investors feel this uh, with a focus on the African logistics space. 
and I think that is going to be another um, that is going to give the share price more legs. Mm -hmm. So at, at this juncture, even though at this current price it looks a bit full yeah. on the back of an impending acquisition, I would say hot. Hot for Imperial for Daniel. I'm going to go with hot as well. So very hot to, tonight on Imperial. Okay.